First John chapter one, just to give you an overview of, of what's going on here and who, who this is. This is John, written by John the Apostle, um, one of the 12 that was chosen by Jesus, one of the 12 original apostles. Um, he, it seems like the, the agreement was that it was written uh, somewhere around 85 to 90 AD. Okay, so we're pretty far after Jesus is crucified. We're pretty far away from that. Uh, he, um, he was the pastor of the church of Ephesus. Uh, and this is probably uh, 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 letters that were passed around to Ephesus and other churches uh, and addressing, you know, the believers in the churches at that time. Uh, the reason or the purpose uh, was to encourage and reassure them of their faith in Jesus and their eternal security. Uh, to warn them about false teachers and antichrists that were infiltrating the church. Um, I just wanted to read page 275 in my Bible. It just says, uh, it, it, I just think this kind of helps a little bit, but it says, John encounters false teachings. Uh, John counters two major threads in the false teaching of the heretics in this letter. They denied the reality of sin. John says that if we continue to sin, we can't claim to belong to God. If we say we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and refusing to accept the truth. They denied that Jesus was the Messiah, God in flesh. John said that if we believe that Jesus was God incarnate and trust him for our salvation, we are children of God. Um, the like, kind of like the, 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 the blueprint of, of this is that uh, uh, God is light, God is holy, God is love, uh, and God is life. He gives us eternal life. So that's, uh, that's the overview of, of all of it and the purpose of it and what's going on here. Um, so we'll start in chapter 1, verse 1 through 4, and we'll go through there and see what we got here. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared, we have seen it and testify to it, and we proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard so that you may also have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. Okay. Um, as you read that, I, I'm not sure what your version is or what it looks like, but uh, in mine, uh, word, in uh, uh, verse at the end of verse 1, it says word of life, and word is capitalized. I don't know whether that's in yours or not. Why do you suppose that is? What is, uh, why is that capitalized? It's talking yeah. about Jesus. Jesus. Mm. Word, the word, uh, is Jesus. Um, does that sound familiar to anybody else as far as the word? Capitalized? Chick? Exactly. And in Genesis also, the exact same words in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and I like to read that because anytime, usually when I grab those, the Bibles that we have for handouts, and I want to give it to uh, somebody that I've been witnessing to, um, that's an easy thing to, to you know, just give them the Old Testament, or the New Testament. And I always like to tell people to start out with the Gospel of John. Uh, I think it's the, the, uh, the easiest gospel to read for a non-believer. Um, and it's the, it gets to the point uh, and the purpose right away. So I just want to read this just to kind of reiterate that. But it says, uh, in the beginning was the Word. And then what I do is when I hand them the Bible, I, wrote, I always write 
above the word, I write the word Jesus. Any place that says word, I put Jesus above it. Because if a non-believer read that, then they would say, in the beginning was the word, okay, What's a, what does that mean? You know, as believers, we know what that means. That means Jesus. So if I put that above it, then they could just, you know, read it that way. In the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. And that's, to me, is so important that when it says Jesus was God, because then that takes away from people who think that Jesus was just, you know, well, there's all kind of beliefs out there, but that he was not God. You know, he was the son of God, or, you know, you know, some of them say, you know, that God created Jesus and Lucifer, and, you know, that they were brothers and all that nonsense. But anyway, and, you know, as you read through that, uh, it continues on. It says, through him, through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life. And that's key. And that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. And then I'm going to just skip down to 14 because that kind of ties it together. It says, the word became flesh. Jesus became flesh. He became human. And made his dwelling among us. Okay? So, you know, John is, is um, you know, he made that claim in the Gospel of John, and now he's kind of, you know, making the same claim and claim in this uh, uh, this letter. As he as he's talking, and he says um, in the beginning, he says, "We have seen with our eyes, we have looked at, and our hands have touched. This we proclaim." The word of life. The life appeared and we have seen it, or him, and testify it, and we proclaim to you eternal life. So he says we heard him, we've seen him, and we've touched him. Have any ideas or thoughts on why he might be saying that? As he's, you know, sending this letter out to the... Because he was an eyewitness. There you go. He's, he's saying, hey, look, you know, I... Uh, I have credit here, you know. I I know what I'm talking about because I personally uh, saw Jesus. Uh, I've touched him and I've heard him for three years. So I, you know, I am an, uh, uh, an eyewitness. And uh, one of the things that was going on back then was there was a lot of uh, false teachers uh, trying to combine Christianity with with uh, uh, with the secular world and, and beliefs of like that and, and things of that nature. Uh, and one of my commentaries that I use is uh, J. Vernon McGee. And he said uh, there was the, uh, uh, I guess it's dosectic Gnosticism. Uh, concerning the incarnation, impossible since God could not unite himself with anything evil such as a body taught that only Jesus seemed, seemed to have a body, but he actually did not. For example, when he walked, he left no footprints. Because they believe that, that all flesh was sinful. All flesh is sinful. So how could God Almighty, pure and holy, come in the flesh because flesh is sinful? So that's what they were, that they were trying to kind of intermingle that with, with the teachings of Christianity. So that's why um, John is kind of setting us up to say, no, that's not true. You know, uh, I, I saw him, you know, I touched him, and I heard him for three years. One of the things that, the, one of the, the things that I always liked about John was, uh, you know, you've heard the, um, I guess I'm, I'm just going to assume that you heard that John was the apostle that, whom Jesus loved which uh, I kind of thought that was odd. It almost sounds like John was his favorite, uh, but I'm not too sure about that. But anyway, he, and, and John's actually the one that says it, although he doesn't say it outright. But he says uh, in uh, 13, John, the Gospel of John, 13, 23 to 25, 
Uh, and this is when they're in the upper room and Jesus is saying that uh, somebody's going to betray him that night. And uh, it says, one of them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, which was John, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter motioned to this disciple and said, ask him which one he means. Leaning back against Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Now, the only reason I read that was because it says that, you know, John was the one that Jesus loved and leaning back against Jesus. And I thought, wow, you know, how cool would that be? Or how cool was that? You know, that they're in the upper room and he's with, you know, it wasn't just the, the 12 apostles, there were other ones, but the apostles were his, his closest people and they're reclining at supper and John is like right there, you know, because back then they, they used to actually kind of lay down to eat. And then Peter says, you know, you ask him, who is it? And all he had to do was lean back. You know, and he's leaning up, he's leaning up against God Almighty. And I thought, you know, wow, what a, what a privilege that was. You know, uh, I'm not sure whether he knew it at the time what, what that meant or how special that was, but I'm sure in later on in life he figured that out. Um, I don't know what that's going to be like uh, when we get to heaven. Uh, you know, we're going to be there with about, I don't know how many, you know, millions or billions of our closest friends. You know, uh, I don't know whether we're going to be able to do that or not, but, you know, uh, that, that was pretty special to me. I always like to, like to think about that, uh, to be able to do that. Um, in, uh, does somebody have uh, John could somebody look up John 20 29 and read it anybody Jesus said to him because you have seen me have you believed Blessed are they who do not, did not see me and yet believe. Mm -hmm. So, because the apostles and John, you know, they, they, they saw Jesus, they walked with Jesus, uh, he taught them, they believed. Okay, so they were walking by, you could say they're walking by sight, but they had faith. But what I like in there is it talks about, uh, you know, not having seen him and still believe, which is us, you know, and all, all believers since then, since Jesus died. It's us. So we're blessed because we, we believe in him. We've never seen him. You know, we've never touched him. We've never heard him. And yet we believe by faith. And that's what God calls us to do. You know, there was only a, you know, a, a certain amount of people that, that were in contact with Jesus and uh, saw him and believed in him. Uh, because they saw him, they saw the works that he was doing, and uh, you know they 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 believed that he was the son of son of God. Um, but how cool is that that we are blessed because two thousand years later we're still uh, believing just by because of the word, this word here. Uh, any thoughts or anything as I'm going along here? No? Pretty quiet, quiet crowd. So he talks in verse, uh, verse 3. He says, We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard, so that, you, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. What... Um, what do you think he means by fellowship? What's that mean to you? Getting together with other believers. Mm -hmm. Yep. Check. But when he puts it in the context of fellowship, his fellowship is with the Father and with the Son. I think the meaning of the word fellowship carries something different than what we say with the word. Mm-hmm. We mean fellowship, we getting together and socializing and having a, even bonds with our friends, our fellow believers. But I think he's talking there 
the deeper bond, the, the unity in the spirit with the Father, the Son. And what makes it complete is that it's also with you. Mm -hmm. So the believers, John as the apostle, and Jesus and the Father, all united as one, mm -hmm. I think is what he means by fellowship there. Mm -hmm. It's a stronger term. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. Wow. Susan, I agree with Chicks and Lois that I think um, I think it does go deeper because John's speaking to believers. You know, he, they're dealing with Gnosticism coming in and people trying to bring in more of the you know the world coming in. Mm -hmm. And he's like believers, you need to understand that it's not just fellowship on a superficial level of getting together and kind of having a snack together and you know, we're gonna talk, we're all Christians, we're all gonna talk. It's it's fellowship together, I'm in your midst. Yeah. And yeah. That, that really key and deeper connection is, but I think that that's what John's trying to really hit home with. Sure. Is that it has to go deeper. Mm -hmm. um, you need to understand there's, there's a world out here that's trying to infiltrate yeah, exactly. your life with Christ and mm -hmm. our, you know, the life with us, with, with God the Father. Yep. You know, yeah, for sure. Extra deeper step. Mm -hmm. Yep. Which is why we have small group. Yeah. Because it is it is a friendly fellowship so that you intentionally go deeper. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um you know the the it's it's kind of tough if you if you if you only come to church on Sunday, you know, and you come in for come in here for an hour and hour and fifteen minutes or whatever. And then you know it's nice to come in and see everybody, uh, and uh, you know you know listen to the word, but then you leave and and where do we go, you know, uh, we go back out into the the world, you know, uh, and you know it just keeps getting, just keeps getting worse and worse out in the world, you know, pulling at us and and attacking us and all that, so, you know how how important it is to be plugged into something else besides Sunday, you know, Wednesday night Bible studies and, you know, small groups and, you know, um, you know, I don't know uh, how many people here um, belong to a small group or have belonged to a small group, uh, but I can't tell you how uh, important it is and how, how different it is and special it is because, uh, you know, you see people on Sunday, and you go up to them and say, "Hey, how you doing? What's everybody say? Fine. Fine. Are you really? You know. Uh, but then you get involved in a small group, you know, where it's you know, and small meaning you know, keep it you know, eight to twelve in that area. Then instead of being you know, here with you know, a couple of hundred people, now you're sitting down in somebody's house. You're 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 starting to get to know people. Uh, you're starting to uh, uh, develop you know, friendships and and uh, similarities and uh, that's to me is how uh, that to me is the fellowship that 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 helps to bond you to other believers uh, and also helps to uh, have people who support you and and then uh, you know and then when you you get to know you let your guard down and you start talking about stuff that's going on in your life then people can you know pray with you, for you, uh, you know, they're asking about you, they're supporting you, uh, that's, you're not going on it alone, you know, uh, so that is really important. So just a little plug for small groups if, if you're not in one or, you know, I encourage you to, to do that. You know. um, and in um, uh, Hebrews, uh, I was just going to read this real quick, but Hebrews chapter 10, uh, 24 and 25, he says, uh, uh, And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing. Let us encourage one another, all the more as you see the day, capital D, day approaching. So, you know, there you go. And he's talking about, you know, you need to get together with people 
on a regular basis and on, and on a different level, an intimate level, uh, so that uh, we can spur one another on towards love and good deeds. And that, you know, that's, that's what we need. We need that backing, that support. You know, because out in the world right now, we're not, we're, we're the minority, you know, and it's getting worse. Um, so we need to, we need to stand behind one another and, and, and support one another. Well. And then, uh, um, you know, as, as Chick said, you know, this is a, this is a fellowship, not only with believers, but with God the Father and God the Son. This is a, a, a key element here. This is, this is a, uh, an important factor here. Um, but he says, um, he says that our fellowship is with the Father and, and the Son. Um, can you have fellowship with the Father if you don't believe in the Son? Exactly, and you know I, I've I, I ran into this one time, witnessing to somebody, and uh, trying to explain explain that, and uh, you know they were saying you know well you know I believe in God, I pray to God every day, you know, and I believe that God hears my prayers and answers my prayers, and I said yeah. Uh, do you and do you believe in Jesus? And it was a little iffy there. And then as we started talking, I say, well, you know, uh, Jesus says, you know, I am the way, you know, the truth, and the life. You know, no one comes to the Father except through me. And as we started talking, and I wasn't like I was just talking, you know. But the more I kept kept it up a little bit, they started to get agitated. And he finally said, "Well, I know, I know my God, and I know uh, that He hears me, and I don't need anybody else to tell me that I, you know, in other words, He doesn't need Jesus to get to God." And I went, "Okay, so you know that kind of, you know, you don't want to, I don't want to push him too much further because he got agitated with that." So I said, "Okay, you know, that's fine." That's that's what you believe right now, but maybe it'll maybe it'll sink in. I don't know, but you know you you, you can't do it. You know Jesus is the way. He's the he's the one. He's the Messiah. He's the Savior, uh, and that's why God sent him. So, and then verse four he says, uh, "We write this to make our joy complete." What do you what do you think he means by that? To make our joy complete. Any ideas? And the Amplified says, in seeing you included, and by having you share in the joy of salvation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. More than Mario type of thing. Yes. Now, I, I was thinking about that, like, like you know, uh, how, you know, it talks about when, uh, when somebody gets saved that the angels, you know, uh, rejoice. And I was thinking, okay, how, how do I... How do I relate this to, to me? Well, I mean, it's easy to say, but you know, if if you see your your kids and you see them, uh, that like there's something that you want them to to uh, I don't know, I can't think of a good reason or a good example, but something to accomplish or something to get in their heads or or something like that, something good, you know, and they and they finally do it, you know, uh, how does that make you feel? You know, wow, you know, they got it. Um, you know, especially, like, let's talk about salvation. You know, when my daughter accepted the Lord, and I was like, wow, you know, uh, you know, that, that gave me joy. That made my joy complete because now, you know, the Lord has saved me and my daughter. You know, that made that joy complete. And that's what he's talking about here because we're all brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, through the rest of this book, he, he talk, keeps talking about, you know, love one another, love one another, love one another, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, so for 
John uh, to see that fellowship and them to come to know the Lord and all that, he had joy in that, you know, because he was the he was their pastor. He found joy in that. Does that make sense? Did, does that relate? Can you relate to that? No. Yeah. Good. Um, okay. Verse 5. Uh, let's read uh, 5 through 7. Walking in the light. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we proclaim, if we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in the darkness, we lie, and we do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. So he says, uh, uh, we have heard from him. Who's him? Jesus. Jesus. So Jesus has told them, and they declare to you. And th let me just back up a little bit. I, I, I never really clicked what, you know, John is, is, is uh, writing this letter to the church. And I, as I said in the beginning, they're saying that it's somewhere around 85 to 90 A.D. So this is... Uh, Jesus has been dead for, you know, say, almost 50 years, I guess. And it, so now John is actually teaching second and third generation. People that didn't, weren't alive when Jesus, well, some of them might, might still be alive, but probably the majority have passed away, the ones that were around when Jesus walked the earth. So now this is their sons and their grandsons and granddaughters and all that. So this is how, you know, it's easier for them to be led astray by these false teachers. So that's why John's kind of like, okay, let me, let me start over again. Let me reiterate these things so that you can continue on. You know, basically it's a pep talk uh, and, and, and to be on guard. So uh, that kind of, I, I never really thought about that, that, uh, oh yeah, that's right, those people are, Probably dead, you know. So, well, I have a sure. I'm just wondering who is this we? Because he keeps saying we, like up in the first part, mm -hmm. and all through. Mm -hmm. so we've seen, we proclaim, mm -hmm. we proclaim to you, appear to us. Mm -hmm. We proclaim it so you may have fellowship. I know who the you is. Who's we? He, mm -hmm. he, John and who? Mm -hmm. Any ideas on that? Well, yes. It's other believers. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I believe it's other believers. And, and I believe that it could be because some, well, John's still alive. The other apostles. Mm -hmm. Or disciples or anybody that were you know, like like we kind of like focus on you know the twelve apostles, uh, but you know when you think about it, you know when uh, when Peter preached the first sermon, there was uh, like three thousand that got saved. Uh, so there were a lot of people around when Jesus was alive and who believed. You know, some of them were probably younger than John, uh, so they may be part of John's church. They may. Be you know, maybe, uh, you know, uh, good friends with him, uh, whatever. So I think that's, that's the way, plus other believers, wherever that is. Yeah, because sometime like later he, sa he says, I, I, this, I, that. Mm -hmm. Both just seem, I don't know why he was saying we. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that's how I think, you know, that's what I think it means. So, he was, Yeah. Part, part of it, though, may also be the hospital we. You know, the hospital we? Yeah, have you ever heard that? You know, when the nurse comes up to you and says, okay. how are we feeling well, today? I've heard the royal we. But part of this is he, he keeps giving a message about the, the sun 
and the Father. Mm -hmm. And he says, and, and within the context of that, he uses the phrase, the, the, the word, mm -hmm. and, and I wonder, if it, to a certain degree, if that's part of what he's also saying, mm -hmm. is that the unified message here is we. Mm -hmm. We are to live with the mind of Christ. We are to live as Christ. Mm -hmm. And that by using the word we, it just draws that connection more and more. Mm -hmm. so I, I don't you know, I don't know for sure. I no, that's look a, that's the Greek to see yeah. the, the actual word and how it comes mm -hmm. out, but I, I know that, that word fellowship mm -hmm. Koinonia. Koinonia. Yes. Yep. It's, it has so much more to do with communion mm -hmm. than it does fellowship. Yeah. And, and I think that's part of what he's mm -hmm. trying to convey. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good point. Yes. When I say we, isn't it just we as we, the believers? It could be. I, I believe. I think that's what it is. Yeah. Because he, he's writing to the other believers. Mm -hmm. So he's including himself in that group and including them with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's a combination of all of it. Yeah, because, you know, the believers and God and Jesus and, yep, the people that are alive at the time and the church. Yep. So when he says, we proclaim to you, you is the church at Ephesus. Mm -hmm. Yep. I think in that case, it does mean the apostles and the, the believers and mainly the, uh, maybe the other early Christians that were eyewitnesses and mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. And then there's other parts where it says, if we say we don't sin, that's kind of like what Chick was talking about, that kind of way. Right. So I think there's two different ways. That's what I'd say. And being the Greek scholar that I am, you know. Yeah, that's, that's true. I don't want to brag. <laughs> yeah. You can. Go ahead. We'll let you brag for a little bit. I'll brag He's also later. addressing... Um, you know, he, he's addressing specific things in this. So I think when he's kind of saying generally one of the we's meaning like we those of us that like because there's obviously they're addressing people in the church that are going astray or doing things incorrectly. And I think that's when he's trying to use the the we is in the we where the spirits have dwelt in us and we're following the path that we need to. That's why we the part of the church that he's addressing, you know. So mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. So he says, um, you know, he says, God is light, or, you know, God is holy. Uh, in him there is no darkness at all. Um, if we proclaim, or if we, I keep saying proclaim, if we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. Um, what do you think about that? Can we have fellowship with God while living in sin? Yes. Yes? Yes. Okay. I think the point he's trying to make is that I think that, that if, you're, if, you're, if you're walking in the light, or basically believing in God and trying to pursue a relationship with Him and everything that you do, then when you do make a mistake, that's different than if you proclaim to know Jesus and, and then turn around and live a sinful life. Do you, I think you're lying. You're, you're, it's like, oh, yeah, I believe in Jesus, now let me go and do what I want to do. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't think that it's actually salvation at work there. I think that it's just like a false declaration of, of, you know, I know God. I think that that's kind of like the problem. And I, I think that's what he's referring to. I mean, he addresses it in verse 8. Mm -hmm. it, it's a yes and no, right? Because you can't say that we don't sin. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You're living like that all the time. That's, that's a completely different thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and, yeah. and he kind of gets to that in a couple of verses. Right. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, exactly. We all sin. Uh, you know, when he says... If you say you have no sin, then you you lie. <laughs> uh, but you know, if if you if you are truly a believer, uh, and then you get caught up, you know, you get caught up in a in a sin, and you 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 know that you're wrong, uh, 
but you kind of like try to turn a blind eye to it or try, try to justify it. Um, how do you, how do you on like, s s easiest thing would be to say, how do you uh, live in that sin six days a week and come to church on Sunday and have fellowship with God and worship God? You know, that's, it's, it's like, I don't think that's pleasing to God. And it has to be tugging on you um, that you're that you're wrong if you're a believer, truly a believer. Uh, because I mean, we're all, we're all we all have the the the, uh, uh, the sin pull. You know, we're delivered from it, but we still have the sin pull because we're living in this, you know, which is sinful. You know, but on the other hand, if you're not a believer, which a lot of people uh, proclaim to believe in God. Uh, but they don't act like it, you know, because they still want to be in the world. So, you know, we should be we should be continuing to uh, try to live a sinless life as best we can. Alana. Christ is the active personification of God's truth to us. Mm -hmm. It should be the core of our belief. And in this, when you ask the question, what do you think of walking in the light? What does that mean? I would know this is walking is an active process involving every part of the body. Mm -hmm. looking, Christ is being the active personification of God's truth and his love. If we are walking, if you look at it in terms of the question of walking in light, and that being the, you know, an active process that we can use all of ourselves, then the two, you can see how the two go together. Mm -hmm. If we're using, you know, if we're walking in the light, if we're using every part of our being to do that, which the, the general act of walking uses, mm -hmm. every part of ourselves, but if we're using every part of our being to walk in the light, our soul connected to Christ, and he's the personification of God's love, then you know, bringing that all together, you know, looking at it in terms of John speaking to believers, these are things we should. He's saying we like we should know these things. You know, mm -hmm. this other stuff is creeping in. Yep. We should know this. Mm -hmm. We should know that Christ is a God's personification of truth and love, and mm -hmm. we should be walking with every part of our being to do that, and not deviate from it. Mm -hmm. You know, so like mm -hmm. asking the question and walking in the light. Well, what should we be doing? We're using every part of our being to do that. Mm -hmm. Right. We're gonna we're gonna fall under shadows on our walk, mm -hmm. but if we're using every part of our being, then that should be heading us toward the light mm -hmm. as much as possible. Right. Yep. You know, within the confines of the shell. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mark. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that you said, you know, uh, <clears throat> believing in God, and, and as soon as you said that, I think of uh, James two nineteen. It says that uh, you believe that God is one and you do well. The demons also believe in each other. So belief in itself mm -hmm. doesn't help you. Mm -mm. And the next verse says, but are you willing to recognize, you foolish fellow, that faith without works is useless? Your life has to uh, be obedient, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people say they believe in God, but their life doesn't reflect it at all. It doesn't help you. Right. So it's not just saying you believe in God. It's not going to help you at all. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's, you know, that verse says it better than anyone could say. You know, the demons believe it's not helping that. Mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. No, there should be a, uh, what is it? There should be an outward, outward change. From, a, from the, in, wait a minute, yeah. I got it wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Do a bumper sticker. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> eh, I lost it. Anyway. You know, yeah, if you, if you change on the inside, if you have a heart change, did you get it? Yeah, okay. You know, if you, if you truly accept the Lord, okay, and put your trust in Him on the inside, there should be an outward expression, expression and a change in your life. You know, if you, you know, uh, one, of the, one of the guys I listen to on the radio says, you know, how do you know you're truly saved? Well, look back at your life. You know, it depends how long you've been saved. Uh, are you the same person that you were a year ago? And then look, then look next year, and then you say, "Are you still the same person you were a year ago, or have you 
growing closer to the Lord. So there's this continuing process of, of uh, you know, sanctification, you know, being set apart, being, you know, like-minded and with Christ. So there needs, you know, like if you're, if you're just kind of, I believe in God and then just keep on going out in the world, what happened? Where's the change? You know, you could say, like you said, you could say you believe, but where's the fruit? Where's the fruit in it? Mm-hmm. So if you have that with God, how can you, how can you be in spiritual darkness? How mm-hmm. can you be walking in the world if you're, if you're truly uh, committed to God? Mm-hmm. You can't. What does it say? You can't serve two gods. Yep. You can't serve. Uh, manna and um, um, what's the other one? Flesh. God and manna. God. There you go. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I can't see the clock. Does anybody know what time it is? Eight o'clock. Um, okay. One of the he, twice in there he says uh, that we lie if if you don't do this, you lie. And I was thinking, hmm, how would that work uh, as a witnessing tool if you did that? Mm. You know, if you if you started talking to somebody, say, yeah, yeah, you lie. You know. Uh, <laughs> He's saying that, you know, he's being really firm, but these are believers. He's trying to make a point across this. But I wouldn't recommend using that line for uh, uh, trying to witness to a non-believer. That would, I guess that could be that. One of the things, if I remember correctly, about the Gnostics, you know, they, they, they believe you could separate your physical life from your spiritual life. So mm-hmm. they could do whatever they want physically mm-hmm. and think that it would not affect them spiritually. And that's mm-hmm. part of what he's dealing with here. They're, yeah. they're living one way and saying this doesn't have any effect on my spiritual life. And, mm-hmm. Well, that's ridiculous. It's, it's you know, yeah. they know that that does. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, that's that's part of what I think he's dealing with. You know, they're saying, well, you know, I don't have any sin because they think they can separate those mm-hmm. two. Yeah. But you can't. You right. Know, you can't separate those two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they actually, there were some beliefs back then that the, the flesh was, the flesh didn't matter at all. So they would actually, there was, they would believe that it was okay to go with the prostitutes you know uh, because the flesh is dead the flesh is evil and or you know it doesn't matter but you just it's all about the spirit so that's uh, that's some craziness there um, so um, all right um, I think a lot of what I run into is people that especially more and more today oh, I love I like Jesus I love Jesus but they have no idea any knowledge of who he is, mm-hmm. and they they don't believe. As long as as long as they, he doesn't step on their other beliefs, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like, well, I want to do this, I want to do this. Yeah. And Jesus never really said anything about this, this, this. Like, yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah. You know, and they really have no knowledge of who he is. Like, mm-hmm. don't, you know, and some of them don't believe. They just have the, the historical Jesus. Mm-hmm. You know, that they yeah. <clears throat> Thing, and they have their own definition of who Jesus is, yeah. which has nothing, very little to do with what the Bible's talking about. Mm-hmm. Yep, exactly. It's, uh, it's more about the head knowledge rather than the heart knowledge. Well, it's, even, it's, even, it's bad knowledge, too. Mm-hmm. very sensitive to what goes on. 
And it's a real picking and choosing. It's not an embracing the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Because when you really look at what Jesus said, like Charlie was saying, you either come to the conclusion that he was completely and totally deluded. He um, had a madman complex. Mm -hmm. Or he, he was trying to um, just say things. Or he was who he said he was. Exactly. He was God's son. Mm -hmm. Because he didn't just say like neutral things or, or easy or just be nice to people. Mm -hmm. He said things that were radical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, there's definitely. I mean, there's 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 definitely a, a lack of understanding. And I've had I've had people say to me, "Well, you know, it's a crutch. You just, you, it's easier." I'm like, "It's not easier." You yeah. Live in this world, mm -hmm. you gotta live in this world, and you're living in a way that the world doesn't like. Yep. That's not that's not an easy thing. Mm -mm. I mean, that is that's you're gonna get beat on. Yeah. It's just you're living in the world. Mm -hmm. and exactly. That's just ignorance. That's just you. You don't understand. You you don't really you haven't really looked at what it, who he really is and what it really means. Because mm -hmm. it tells us, and the Bible tells us, you 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 live how you're we live how we're supposed to live as Christians. You're you're gonna get beat on. Oh yeah. You are. Mm -hmm. It's just yeah. the way it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jesus even said it. He said they hate me. They're gonna hate you. You know. So. Yeah. And we are the min minority. That's for sure. They say one in ten. Is that what it is? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I be I believe it. It's it, I believe that it's at least that. I would think. One, in ten. Oh, one out of every ten people is a believer. Is a true believer? Mm -hmm. That's what they say. I don't know how true it is. I believe it. <laughs>